Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome Richard Flengey, who is in Cape Girado in Missouri. How are you doing, Richard? And I'm doing fine. It's nice day here. A little hot, but it's nice. <laughs> um, I, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah it's a, the, the height of summer there. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is electric vehicles, uh, renewable solar, renewable energy. Richard is an author, former co-host of EVTV, a futurist and a patented I inventor. Uh, so, um, Richard, first of all, uh, maybe we just start off with the electric car market mm -hmm. today, because there's a lot of there, there's a lot of discussion around and people are, you know, there's a lot more options out there in the marketplace. Um but I, I guess people are still concerned about the the infrastructure and you know whether you know we can support them and you know if you go and drive out into the middle of nowhere are you going to not find a charging station that kind of thing. But just give me an update on on the state of the electrical vehicle market and particularly how it's meeting the infrastructure challenges. Well, in the last few weeks here, the major automakers have joined the Tesla charging system. And that is a tsunami of shifting in the obstacles to the electric vehicle. So up until now, if you bought a Ford or General Motors electric vehicle, you did not have access to a wide range of charging options. It was very difficult to travel outside of your home nucleus area. Tesla's yeah. secret sauce all along was their robust and widely distributed uh, uh, charging system, which you have a ton of them in California. Sure. Uh, and I guess the irony or the, 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 the humor or whatever in the entire system was, I was in electric vehicles and we were reporting on them in the very early days and General Motors and Ford and all these industry experts just guffawed and joked about Tesla and that they were never really going to be able to sell cars on scale because of how difficult that challenge is. Mm -hmm. And now here we have uh, Ford and General Motors and basically several other automakers coming back and adopting the, the Tesla technology. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge yeah. flip. And that is probably the news of the current state of electric vehicles right. right now the charging system is going to open the door to a floodgate and how how is that um so i mean you mentioned like california i mean we obviously have uh, a a a power infrastructure here that is uh, seriously under strain at times um and uh, so how does uh, how are how is the other side of the coin, the infrastructure, you know, because if you have all these electric cars, you have all these yeah. charging things, I mean, you're, you're starting to put more load on the grid. I mean, what's the solution to that? Breaking up the grid, basically. You're exactly right. And I have a couple chapters in the book about it. Uh, the grid uh, is the largest mechanical device. The United States grid system is the largest machinery in, on the planet. And uh, it is highly inefficient. Uh, power losses in terms of transportation costs. They have almost no storage. So what mm. is going to happen? And it has happened in California, which had uh, peak, peak stations that would flip on very quickly uh, to assist an additional electrical load. Tesla has sold uh, the mega pack systems. So you're going to see battery storage banks popping up all over certainly California I will assume mm -hmm. would be the first but but the uh, uh, the efficiency gain is going to come from a battery storage reserve and uh, that has to be built yeah. it's a physical process mm -hmm. but the answer is here it's a matter of paying for it and it's a matter about getting it in place Right, and and then just generally overall and in, in competition in in the car EV car market it, it, it's itself. Um, are we going to see? Are we going to see 
you know, more people choosing different types of, you know, like as they did with combustible, you know, car engines, um, are we going to see people, are we going to see more and more and more variety? You know, I, which I've always talked about this right now, electric vehicles are offered in a premium market. So that is our mm -hmm. luxury market. Yeah. And it is kind of still a luxury art item and kind of computer started out that way. And you could argue maybe even smartphones, but right. when that technology hits a very affordable under $25,000 electric vehicle that works, that has range and has a charging network to plug into, there will be a massive, the upturn, the, the market adoption curve. And they almost, I, I, I would say, you know, if you want to know a conspiracy theory, I would say they're holding the reins back, uh, even at the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the people that control the grid. And the, if they let loose that uh, low cost EV, it will be game mm -hmm. over and it probably would strain the current right. electrical grid. Yeah. And then there's um and then there's the um as you you mentioned we mentioned solar as well mm -hmm. right and um, I mean obviously here in you know Southern yeah. California I, I have I have I have solar it makes a lot of sense um, the problem with uh, solar is is the same issue is that the cost of your solar and then if you want to add battery storage the the cost of the batteries is as much as the yeah. <laughs> the solar installation itself do you see that uh, and i think that's what's holding a lot of people back from going that route yeah and uh we dealt we had we had a fairly large private solar array 40 kilowatts mm -hmm. which is big for that mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah i don't see everyday americans getting that heavily invested in a solar system yeah. and what i proposed in the book and you actually have it going on in California, one would be bi-directional charging. So if you mm -hmm. had an electric car and your home had bi-directional charging, you could actually drive the car to where the solar panels are. So you wouldn't even have to have solar panels on your house. You could drive your car to where the solar panels are, fill it up with sunshine electricity, come back home, plug it into your house, flip on the bi-directional, and you could run your household on uh, mm. uh, transportable electricity. I see that, and, and, and there's, a, I think it's House Bill SB 233. Uh, a California legislator has initiated that, and I see that as being a huge factor in uh, renewable energy. So, yeah. yeah. One, one of the things here, though, that, um, you know, that kind of gets people, especially people who've invested in solar is the, you know, you get the offset, you know, when yeah. you're connected to the grid and you have solar, you get the offset. They're trying to they're trying to tamper with that, which is kind of weird for me because, I mean, it's actually de-incentivizing people. You got that right. They uh, the, the, the utility industry looks at solar with, you know, one eye open and one eye closed. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I would surmise, it would be my educated guess, there is a huge amount of electricity being produced, probably right in the San Diego area in Southern California. I had a lot of customers out there. There is mm -hmm. uh, a lot of sunshine and even a small kilowatt uh, array would produce excess electricity and it would net back into the utility grid. So yeah. they may be getting tired of writing those checks back to solar panel owners, and there's some yeah. some grousing there. So you you yeah. you you hit the nail on the head with that. <laughs> um, no, ab absolutely. And then just I mean, so as as we as these transitions, as you said, like the charging um, network, all of that, um, how does that start to change? behavior because then you'll also obviously you've got charging stations now you've got ones that take a long time you've got the speed ones you know you, and as you say um it's a premium market right now but as it comes down what what changes do you think it makes in in just car behavior even you know first off the number one thing that i always heard from electric vehicle owners 
they charge at home and they don't go to the gas station. So in your particular thing, it, you know, you, you don't, you have sort of a different dimension of your life. You're not tethered to trying to get to a gas station. Now you do, if you're out, you have to go to a charge station, but a lot of your everyday stuff, you don't ever go to a gas station. Number two, uh, probably work is going to add in solar charging systems. The, the, the solar charging panels over a parking lot make a lot of sense. That area yep. is clear. It would provide shade. And then your employees, as an additional incentive, are going to get free fuel while they're sitting at work. I, and I've heard some of that, and there's some press on that in, in California, and they're kind of leading the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the change to electric is a little different. I mean, when you do mm -hmm. drive and you do travel, you are conscious of where the next charge station is. You're conscious right. of where your battery is. So it's, a, it's you know, it's, it's, you're going to yeah. have to adapt. And and on the on the subject of, of batteries and stuff, that, um, the raw materials uh, required to build um, and batteries on scale and stuff. Tell me a little bit about that because sometimes you hear concerns raised about the the availability or where they are sourced from and all that, yeah. and you know the conditions. Yeah. yeah, I write quite a bit about that, and we studied a lot of battery technology. The 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 the, the critical decision has been made at this point the mass production technology is lithium. Lithium is mined uh, like several other things. It's pulled out of the ground. They process it a little bit, but lithium has a very favorable matrix that seats electrons. So I would, I, I would describe it as it would be a bar or a restaurant with a lot of seating and uniform tables and chairs. So it has, the best technology that densely packs energy. So it is going to be lithium. Now lithium mm -hmm. in and of itself is a little bit unstable. So they add some additional precious metals to the lithium to make the quality of the battery a little more stable. So there is, um, you know, there's gonna be a little disruption there. And, and, and mm -hmm. but there's plenty of lithium. So mm -hmm. we, 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 we're going to we're going to see a lithium boom, I'm sure. Right. Right. And um, and then it, so, I mean, as you mentioned, um, uh, breaking up the grid and things, I mean, across the country, because obviously like solar here, yeah. you know, it's no brainer, California. In other places, uh, it, it's uh, it's a little more patchy because of the the, mm -hmm. the weather or whatever. Um, how how does, say, a, a different part of the U.S. or the country yeah. or a different country, how does that tackle? How does that leverage solar that's like, that's, um, effectively? That is actually falls back on to the portable battery. So you right. have, now we have the technology to store electricity and it remains stored. So Southern, Illinois, Southern California, Southern Arizona could have large solar arrays. They could produce mm -hmm. the electricity, store it in a solar battery train, and that battery train could simply transport it to a northern metro, energy filled, ready to go. All I have to do is plug in the train when it gets there. So that I would say is probably the big factor to the point of your question. The solar mm -hmm. battery train, which aren't really in place yet, and there, but that is going to be a monumental shift in electrical consumption. Mm -hmm. And um, and just uh, and and do you see uh, battery storage in general? Do you see the the costs coming down for for consumers? Yeah, and right now a good example of a battery system was five six years ago was twenty two hundred dollars per kilowatt. So mm -hmm. a ten kilowatt battery system was twenty two thousand dollars. Now mm -hmm. it's come down to a thousand dollars a kilowatt some of the chinese imports are getting it down in the 500 dollar range but mm -hmm. you have to have controllers and you have to have other devices 
but exactly when they produce on scale, when it gets a mass production behind it and a homeowner can buy a battery system that is substantial for yep. $2,500 or $3,500, that's yep. going to be the watershed when it becomes a, a lower cost. I believe that will happen though. I, yeah, no, I, I I agree with you. I think that's a, I think once you bring it down to manageable, like that's a no brainer. The 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 battery storage, because as I said, right now it can cost you as much as the the solar itself. So it's kind of like people are people are like, okay, I'll put in the solar and I'll just stay on the grid and we'll yeah. we'll do that net metering stuff. I sold a battery that it wasn't much bigger than a box of cereal, and it was two hundred dollars for a brick yeah. with two little electrodes <laughs> that came out of it. No controls, <laughs> no switches, no technology. So, yeah, they are, uh, uh, but they are working at breakneck speed to right. produce it. And one thing that I, I kind of mentioned about Tesla, and I talk a lot about this in the book, Tesla jumped on the cylinder base, you know, like our double A's and triple A's. Yeah. Okay. Well, that manufacturing technology was already in place. So they bought all this machinery that already knew how to make batteries and they are whiz bang booming out batteries mm. at this point. They have the ability to make thousands upon thousands of batteries a day. I mean, so, mm -hmm. so what are the, um, what, what else to uh, putting on your futurist hat now? What, what else is coming down the pike that we should be, we should be, um, thinking about there's a company that i i follow which is called span s-p-a-n they yeah. have a smart electrical box and what that does is a very good example is if you had a solar array you could set the microprocessor control in your span panel it could take your solar panel output and direct it just to your car you could control that circuit and you could fill up your car you could then also, at another time, switch the solar panel output and just run your air conditioner. And, and mm -hmm. if, if you want to talk about the future, and that's really what we learned in the research facility was you had to control and manage these loads. And we didn't have all that fancy stuff. We went over and flipped switches and plugged them things and unplugged right. things. But you will have to be able to direct and control your circuit system in, in your, and your, your energy. That's probably the biggest thing. And then the next extrapolation of that in the future is that you would then integrate into say a neighborhood grid system. So uh, I, I would, I would say if you're going to ask me what the future would hold, it would be a very, very smart home with microprocessor control of all the circuits, even down to the appliance. And we found mm. out you not only had to control the circuit, but you also had to have the switch tied in to turn on the air conditioner at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's, it's a great point, uh, to be honest. Uh, air conditioning was one of the drivers for me putting in yeah, solar yeah. because um, in, in San Diego with our, uh, with our yeah. electricity um, bills here, if you run the AC during the, the summer, you need to take out a second mortgage. Yeah, yeah. and that's uh, <laughs> right when the sun is out. You know, solar can yeah. certainly help or boost it. And I, I oh, it is. Yeah, it's perfect. If you ask me about really future products, all that stuff is going to have some smart interconnections, and they're mm -hmm. you're, they're going to have um, that is definitely coming. It is out, and the guy that runs uh, Span is an ex uh, Tesla executive. Wow. So he is, uh, uh, it's out there. It's a little pricey at this point. It's, it's a, a, a several thousand dollars, but it's cool and it's coming. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would you say then to just lastly, what do you say to the, the people who worry that like smart homes are just, you're just are going to be controlled from externally and you're not really going to have control over your own life? You know, I think it's the exact opposite. The majority of the people I talked to that did off grid, and a matter of fact, I still converse with off-grid people uh, weekly. They love the independence. So it's the exact mm -hmm. opposite of what you think. You're going to be totally free. You're never going to get a cutoff bill, and you can drive on sunshine. Now, there's a capitalization cost in there, but 
No, the the the, the original off gridders are outlaws and rebels that just they're like these people that they want to give the utility company the bird. I mean, they absolutely <laughs> are. That, that's the mindset. I can assure you, it's yeah, it's yeah. not. I I don't think we'll be. Yeah. Excellent. No, no, that's uh, that's that's funny. And yeah, I mean, let's face it, the utility companies have a, definitely haven't done a great job. Um, and they certainly have. I mean, they're not very popular. And and they, you yeah, know, for, for a lot of variety of different reasons. Um, and I think that's why people are looking for the independence. Yeah. And they're they're kind of they got the hairs up on the back about solar. They're not uh, welcoming everybody with open arms. They have regulated <laughs> down to the county so there are mm -hmm. three thousand different solar installation co codes across the u.s so they've got, we've got to show them some love and get that warmed up which one of their arguments yeah. was islanding that they could shut off a grid area and they possibly could get backfed uh, electricity through a, a standing solar system and mm -hmm. and electrocute one of their employees a valid concern it's never happened uh and we pray that it doesn't but uh right. they have a few issues now the other issue and i make it make this in the point in the book i got news for you i don't think anybody really knows what's going on with the grid i don't think they know how much is going in i don't they just know they keep it pumping and uh, uh yeah. there it's just one of those things that's almost like you flip one little switch the whole thing could go off so i don't know that yeah, they, yeah. they don't want a whole lot of they don't want a whole lot of interaction in their grid. No, no it's probably a Frankenstein's monster yeah, that is just you know added it on is. to over the years. And I think without they, any... they get together behind closed doors and say it worked then, you know. So. <laughs> Well, well, listen. Thank you, Richard. Right. This has been fascinating. This has been fascinating. Um, just remind everybody again um, what you do in the name of the book. The name of the book is Verities of an Electric Mule. I'm retired. Uh, I work in electric vehicle and solar research for over 10 years. And now I just write and I communicate about electric vehicles, a lot about climate change. You can find mm -hmm. my book on my website, richardflingy.com, R-I-C-H-A-R-D-F-L-E-N-T-G-E.com. Mm -hmm. I sell the yeah. book and I sell like uh, stickers and a few, and I have blogs and little videos and I just do yeah, it for fun. Um, I don't and all of Richard's information right. will be below this video, okay. so you can you can find that. And I would encourage you to go. I just read a very interesting blog about um, uh, if cats would uh, could text, they would. Yeah, that's exactly. They don't have thumbs. <laughs> they yeah. don't have thumbs. Yeah, they <laughs> anyway. There, if 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 a cat wanted to send a text, he would somehow persuade you to do it. You're for exactly him. right. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, Richard, thanks again. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon.